Let's move on to question three. So on question three, uh, we're looking at a method that's going to deal with these sparse array elements. So with the sparse array elements, um, mo we have a lot of matrices that are zeros almost throughout with the exception of a few elements that are non-zero. And it's going to be easier just to kind of collect these objects in some type of data structure and just call on them individually because 90% of the time or 99% of the time the result's going to be zero. So we have these sparse array entry objects that we're going to be manipulating in our program here. Uh, they have instance variables of a row and a column and a value. We've got a constructor here as well and then three simple accessors. Uh, what's important to note is that these things are immutable. We can't modify them as they've been constructor. We're going to have to create new ones if we want to make changes to them and that's actually going to be pertinent in part B. So in part A we need to kind of talk about the the basic structure of the sparse array. So here's our sparse array. It keeps track of the number of columns and the number of rows that it has. But then it's also got this list up here of our entries. Uh, they're not in any particular order and each non-zero element in our array is one of these entries. So I've got a constructor which basically just constructs a new object, uh, get num rows, get num columns, and then we're going to go ahead and talk about this get value at, and then later on we're going to write this remove column which removes an entire column from our array. Alright, so to the coding. Here is our example. So we've got this matrix. Keep in mind that it's all zeros with the exception of these four elements. So if I wanted to add an element to this, I'm basically adding something to the entries down here. If I want to get an element, what I want to do is I want to traverse this array and see if any of them match the row and column of a particular uh, of our parameters. So if I'm looking for row three and column one, I check and see, nope, nope, Yes, that works. The value is negative 9. But if I'm looking for 3, 3, I'm going to go nope, 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 nope. None of the elements in this list work, and so I'm going to go ahead and return 0. So that's what's really important here, is the fact that I'm going to be dealing with, I need to make sure that I return a value if it exists, or I need to return 0 if not. So I'm going to be dealing with that. So here's our get value at, and I'm given a row and I'm given a column. So what I want to do is I want to go through entries. And a for each loop is going to work wonders here. So I'm going to do for, and my type is a sparse array entry. Which I'm going to name item in entries. So now that I have item, I need to check item. So if item.getRow is equal to row and item.getCall is equal to call, then this is what I want. So if this happens, if I reach this state, then I want to return an int. I want to return item dot get value. And that returns control to whatever called us. Now if I successfully get out of this loop, then that means that item's nowhere in our list, and so here is our return zero. So I've gone through all of the entries looking at each individual item. If the row matches and the column matches, then I go ahead and spit that value back at them in a return statement so I stop searching the arrays list. And if I make it through this loop, then that element doesn't exist in the context of this matrix and I just go ahead and return zero. So looking at what we've got here, I'm gonna need to make sure that I have a point for successfully returning the value if it exists, a point to make sure that I go through all of the elements in entries and a point to make sure that I actually return zero in the context where it doesn't exist. So I'm looking at probably three points for this get value at method. So that's my get value at method. So now I want to take a look at part B. Erasing some of these smudges. 
So for part B, this one is actually going to remove a column from a matrix. So in other words, I'm going to pretend that this column here just doesn't exist anymore, which means this 4 has to physically be shifted over to this spot. Now keep in mind, I'm not moving the actual location. What I'm doing instead is I'm taking its column entry data and I'm switching it to a 3. So these elements that were in that column 1 are going to be gone. They're going to be removed from my list of entries. But any elements that were beyond that column, the columns 2 and more, I'm going to have to make sure that I change their elements. And I did make that mention earlier. Because these objects are immutable, I can't just change the value. I have to physically construct a new item to replace it. So I'm going to either have to remove this and add, and of course it's important to know that uh, the order doesn't matter. So they do mention that entries is in no particular order, so I could physically remove an object and add a new replacement object. The, the order doesn't matter. And so I need to keep that idea in mind. So going to our code, so here's where we're going to write our remove column. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I go through my list, and there's a couple of ways that we can do this. I'm actually going to do this two different ways here. Uh, the first way that I'm going to do this is I know that when I'm dealing with array list elements, um, normally when I'm dealing with an array list elements where I have positions like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, if I remove something at space 1, then this is no longer 2, this is 1. This is no longer 3, this is 2. And this is no longer 4, this is 3. So if I I++, plus plus, then I may skip a box completely. So I know that when I'm dealing with these, it's often helpful to kind of go backwards through our array list. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to say 4 int i gets entries dot size minus 1, i is going to be greater than or equal to 0, and i minus minus. I'm going to go through this list backwards to make sure that when I call on entries.remove, then I'm not going to end up skipping values when I iterate to the next element. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that element out of the list. So I'm going to say sparse array entry or element entry and I'm going to call it item, gets entries dot get i. So I've got the element out, and now I need to look at this element and check its column. So if the item dot get column is equal to column, then I want to just remove it from the list. So this is going to be entries dot remove whatever is at position i. Else, now I need to check to see not only is it at that column, but what if it was beyond the column. So if item dot get call is greater than column, then I need to change its column to the one before it. And probably the easiest thing to do would be to entries dot set and set it with a new object. So a new object of type uh, sparse array entry. But I want the parameters for the first two to be the same. So I want it to be item dot row, get row. And the column's going to be one less. So it's going to be call minus one. And I can use call minus one because it's the column that we have up here and then item dot get entry or get value. So what I've done here is I've removed it if its column matches exactly, but if its column is beyond the column, then I have went ahead and created a new object with the same parameters for the row and the get value and a modified parameter for the column so it's moved to the left. And then I've set that element. So I've replaced the element in entries with a new element. And that should be enough. So looking at this, remember that we have six points left for this. So uh, we're going to need to make sure that we have one point for going through all of the elements in particular, one point for getting the 
getting a particular element, uh, one point for checking and removing if its column matches, one point for creating a new object and replacing it if its column is more than one, and one point to make sure that we do it successfully for all of these elements. Now, I've done this with just taking the existing list and making modifications to it, there is another way that we can do this. And the other way we can do this is by using a temporary array list and then setting entries equal to that temporary array list. So I could have something where I have a list of type sparse array entries. Which I'll call temp. Which is going to get a new array list of type sparse array entries and then what I'll do is I'll go through my entries list and if the elements need to be kept I'm going to put them in temp and just at the very end just reassign entries gets temp so I'll use temp to kind of hold all my good stuff and then just reassign at the very end. So I still need to go through my loop. So for int i gets 0, i is uh, less than entries.size, i++. Now in this case, I'm going forward with my iteration because I'm never actually changing entries. I'm never actually removing items from entries. So the fact that I'm starting at the beginning because nothing's being removed, I'll hit every item in this list. So that's important to know. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get that particular item. So I'm going to say sparse array entry calling it item gets and this is going to be entries dot get I and then I need to know if I'm going to add it. So if uh, item dot get call is greater than greater than just strictly greater than call, then I need to modify it. So I want to do temp dot add a new sparse array entry with the parameters the same row as item. And then the column's going to have to be whatever the get column was minus one. So this is going to be item dot get column minus one. And then item dot get value. So this is going to create a new object with this particular data. And then down here I'll say if item dot get call is less than call, then I just want to add the item to it. So this would be temp dot add item. And that should do it. Because if it's equal to call, if I actually hit column, then I don't want to add it to my temporary array. I only want to add it if it's before, in which case I'm going to add an unchanged version, or if it's after, in which case I'm going to have to modify it and then add it to my list. So again, looking at the points here, I'm looking at a point possibly to uh, add, uh, to create a new list and reassign at the end, a uh, point to make sure that you're actually checking the um, the ones that are greater than and creating a new object, a point check to see if you're checking the ones before than and uh, actually adding an unchanged item, and then one final point for making sure you hit all the items in your original entry. So still six points on this, uh, just slightly different assignment here. So there's two different ways we can do this, and I think uh, both of them are equally as valid. Um, one gets a little bit more reinforcement of what we're doing with the array list than the other ones just manipulating an existing array list.